Hi, and welcome to Writing with Sandhya. This is the next episode, and I'm going to be in conversation with Siddharth Nirwan. Uh, he is a doctor by day and a writer by night. Uh, this is a very interesting combination. So we'll be hearing more about it from him. So let's get into it right away. So welcome to the channel, Siddharth. Thank you very Thank much, Sandhya. So first of all, let me tell you that it's a great honor and pleasure for me to be, you know, sharing the same screen with you. So oh. it's really, uh, that I just want to say thanks to you for inviting me on your wonderful show. Oh, thank you so much. No, it's actually mutual. I've just started this channel, but I know you have a long running blog. So yes, uh, I have a lot to learn from you as well. <laughs> so tell me, it's fascinating to me. I have a lot of questions. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, okay, where do I begin? But um, so have you always liked uh, horror growing up? Yeah, absolutely. I think my <clears throat> love for horror started when I was uh, around uh, seven or eight years old. So, you know, I used to stay at the time for a couple of initial years with my maternal uncle, uncle my Nana ji and Nani ji, because my mother was working up and down. Uh, she was also a doctor. So she was working out of the town. So uh, up till uh, until second class, I used to stay with my maternal uncle. And uh, he used to work in that time uh, in a video library. And uh, I think you might uh, know that that was a golden era of video cassettes and video libraries or the VCRs were there. So, you know, very often this uh, VCR used to come at our home and I used to see a lot of films. But uh, once I saw this film called uh, Purana Mandir. Purana Mandir was a film made by Ramsey Brothers. And I was thrilled to, to, yeah, I was thrilled to the core in a way that I never had been earlier. So I was a big Amitabh Bachchan and Jitinder fan at that time, very in a very young age. But that movie actually just blew my mind away and I happened to watch all the Ram Sebada films and then a lot of Hollywood films. So definitely, yeah, so you can say that uh, since very young age, you know, I have been, uh, uh, almost my entire life, I have loved horror. Oh, that's great. I mean, it's, it's nice that you're now writing about it. But why do you think this uh, genre is so popular? Uh, I think in India itself, there's, a, you know, lots of interest in this. So why do you think that? Yeah, so this genre is actually uh, very popular. I'll tell you my uh, perspective. I mean, why I like horror, why I am afflicted to it. Because as I told you, you know, it gives me, thrills me in a way that other genres don't. I, I have seen a lot of uh, uh, films in other genres also. I'm a big sci fiction, science fiction fan. I'm a, a great fan of Steven Spielberg and James Cameron films. I used to also yeah. watch uh, once upon a time a lot of romantic movies and uh, all those things. But yeah, horror definitely has a sp uh, certain special uh, place in my heart. I think one of the reasons why people like horror is that, you know, horror is actually, it is like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Like on a roller coaster, uh, when the roller coaster is actually like going down. So mm -hmm. you think that, you know, you'll be falling and you'll be dying. But at the back of your mind, you know that, okay, it's just a ride. It is just a simulation. Mm -hmm. Actually, nothing is going to happen to you. So when you're watching a horror film or when you're reading a horror book, why, you know, uh, I get this thrill of, okay, fine, I'm in that particular haunted haveli or haunted mansion or this entity is after me. But somehow in my subconscious mind, I know that, okay, fine, these entities actually may, they do not uh, exist. So it yeah. is like a simulation of, uh, you know, a death-like situation, but you know that you are safe. Nothing is going to happen. Compare it to a, let's say, to a true crime thriller, let's say, okay. So when you are reading a true crime thriller, I, I really get very upset by reading a true crime thriller because I know that these things actually happen to uh, ordinary people like me. And uh, these things are done by uh, people whom I might know of. It might be my friend, my relative, my maid, your God knows, right? So yeah. I get very upset. So that is real horror for me. Reading a yeah. actual crime fiction stories or maybe true crime thrillers. But horror is fun, you know, because I know that whatever may happen, uh, whatever may happen, you know, I'm still uh, going to be alive. So and that's the reason, you know, why I think people, and also I think if you talk about India, uh, India, I think uh, uh, there was a time, golden era when Ramsey brothers were there, used to make films. And then Ram Gopal Verma came and then Vikram Bhatt came. And after that, there had been a, you know, a pause for a long time. And now wonderful directors like Vishal Puriya, Shonak Surule, they're coming up with their uh, fantastic films. So the uh, age of horror is going to rise once again. And talking of horror literature, I think horror literature, horror literature has just begun in the, in the past four or five years. Before that, uh, there was regional horror. People used to write in Marathi, Bengali, they still do, uh, they write and that was very popular. But in, in normal, uh, what you can say, a popular Indian English horror, it was not there five years ago. It just started, uh, you know, in the recent years. Yeah. 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 No, no, that's a great metaphor, you know, the right, and you get that sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach. <laughs> but then, you know, yes, it's you're safe. I think that's interesting. And also, 
the fact that it's uh, films and it's uh, part of our contemporary uh, language and literature as well. Yeah. So, yeah, but you always liked horror, but you became a doctor. And uh, so, like, how and when did you get into writing? Or was that also something that you've always uh, been part of you? So, that actually goes back to the first answer, because uh, my love for horror started with the horror films. And, you know, when uh, you're a teenager or when you're a young guy, you have, you have this fool's paradise. So, in my fool's paradise, you know, in my dreams, I used to think that, okay, fine, I'm watching a lot of these films. Maybe one day I'll become a director and I'll, I'll make these films. But it was uh, never going to be possible because I come from a middle class, uh, a hardcore academic family, right? So in my family, all of them are either, either they are in uh, uh, civil services or in uh, they are doctors or engineers or something like that. No one has ever done this, even till today. So I knew that, you know, uh, filmmaking will never be possible for me. Uh, and then uh, when I was doing my post-graduation, much later, when I was in my late 20s in Bangalore, so I happened to came ac come across this uh, wonderful handy cam and uh, my sister-in-law was there and she was married and her husband had brought it from US and this handy cam was wonderful in the sense that, you know, it can record in night. So it had a night vision. So then it struck to me, maybe if I cannot make a proper budget, uh, you know, film, it is not possible. Maybe I can uh, make a film. If you've seen or know about films like Paranormal Activity, Blair Witch Project, mm -hmm. So they are basically very cheap budget films which are made, uh, uh, you know, in a format of first found footage. Okay, right. so they, that actually doesn't require any money, right? I can yeah. I can take my handy cam or even my phone and I can tell, okay, fine, this happened to me, that happened to me. So yeah. I made a film like that, uh, that was based on a paranormal activity uh, in a medical college hostel when I was doing my post-graduation, as I told in Bangalore. And mm -hmm. uh, I made it and uh, edited on a soft, uh, it was totally made uh, completely free. Not even a single rupee was spent. In editing, okay. I used a uh, very free software. I uh, released it on YouTube, which is again is free. I yeah. promoted it on Facebook, which was a new thing back then. So uh, for a couple of days and weeks, I was a little bit famous in my college. And uh, then uh, I thought that, okay, fine, uh, you know, I should take it forward. But I knew that I cannot make proper budget films. And uh, until then, I, I didn't used to read also. So it's a paradoxical thing because uh, most of the authors, they are very well read people. You know, they have uh, read a lot of books. In my case, I didn't used to read. So I happened to visit this uh, uh, literature festival that happens in Jaipur, very famous called Jaipur Literature Festival. Yeah. Yeah. And that also because it used to happen in my in front of my hospital, SMS hospital. And uh, you know, I saw a very nice crowd was going there and it was entry was free. And the ambience is amazing in Jaipur Literature Festival. You know, you have masala tea and kullar chais and uh, uh, everything, all dishes are there. There is beer, you can drink beer, you can attend to. And a lot of celebrities come over there, right? So. After going there, I realized that maybe if I cannot make films, maybe I can uh, write them. I can write the stories because writing doesn't uh, require any budget. You just need a laptop and your time. It's uh, I mean, it's a free thing to do. So that's how I got into, a, you can say, a writer kind of a thing. Right. No, I, I know you said that people say that one should read a lot. And yes, I'm a reader, but... Uh... I think it's more that you have to be a storyteller. So if you want to express yourself and you want to tell stories, I think that is what's uh, more important, right? So yeah. So where do you get your, all your ideas? Where do you get your material? Yeah. So uh, see, I'm a very visualistic guy. Like. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, for me, when I talk about specifically horror, because uh, uh, until now I've written only horror books, I'm actually also uh, thinking of writing into another uh, genres. I've started working upon them, but if I specifically talk about horror, for me, horror is something very visualistic. I I, I just like the horror, uh, uh, the way Indian uh, filmmakers make, okay, like the Ramsey Brothers films. In Ramsey Brothers films, there was this Chudel or Samri, this demon was there or something haunted. It's just something which I can see, right? So uh, I get my ideas mainly based upon, I can say, the, all the films which I've seen for the last 20, 30 years. So something, my one of my, any one of my book is basically inspired from, you can say loosely inspired from a film. Uh, just like my first book, The Last Wish Trial, was loosely inspired from his film called, very uh, blockbuster Hollywood film called Blair Witch Project. And yeah, uh, so, I yeah. And so uh, one of my books basically, which uh, is a Kindle book, and it is also by like, uh, acquired by Audible. Autism Kindle as well as Audible Dad Never Die. So that is based upon the rural legends of Rajasthan. So uh, one, uh, my colleague was telling me about a place. It says the place name is Chudela, and uh, it is near to his home in Churu. And he was telling me that you know the what is the legend about Chudela? That it is near Chudela, right? So because a uh, hundred years ago, a lot of Chudels used to come and haunt this village. So that's why the name is Chudela. 
it is actually so Ooh. yeah so uh, that inspired me to write a story then i used to stay in ajmer i am basically from ajmer city rajasthan and near ajmer there is a place called very famous called pushkar and uh, yes. that has a only brahma temple in the world and near pushkar there is another place called buda pushkar and that uh, place has a sudha bai kund so there is a kund basically and it is very famous for exorcisms and uh, when i was i have seen those things in reality so uh, it's like that either it's it's based upon the films or it's based upon something real locations or something which i have heard so that is that uh, so ideas actually i'll say that ideas are uh, i mean ideas are so many in my head ideas just keep on coming in a day 10 ideas will come so yeah. getting ideas is not a not a issue just putting them and making them convert into a story and actual thing that is the real challenge that's true yeah And, and so yes, I know you're a doctor. So what kind of doctor are you, and how do you juggle between being a doctor and a writer? Both are very intensive, actually. You know, so. I'll even add to it that I don't uh, just juggle between being a doctor and a writer. I also juggle mm-hmm. between being a doctor, a writer, and uh, as a father of two young kids. So Thank that you. is another that is another uh, almost like a full time job. So uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. So basically, I am a ENT surgeon. So I am a ear, nose, and throat, and uh, head and neck cancer surgeon. So okay. So I am. I am. Uh, I deal with everything about your like uh, shoulder, except for the brain and the eyes. My I, my wife is an ophthalmologist, so she deals with the eyes. So I deal with everything like the tonsils and the thyroids and anything to do with the cancer of this part or the cochlear implants for deaf children and all those things. So I basically work in the arena, and uh, I am an. Uh, I work in a uh, medical college hospital. Mm-hmm. which is the uh, the biggest hospital in the west of uh, india including uh, i'm talking about rajasthan and gujarat and all that uh, yeah and uh, if we talk about the opd that is the maximum number of opd in the entire country even bigger than aims and pgi and all those things so so that's what i am and uh, talking of juggling yeah it's a challenge it's it's every day it's a challenge for me and i wish that i could have you know more time when i uh, yeah. in the facebook post of my contemporary horror writers you know so they when they mention that they have written so many thousands of words every day these day 10000 words 5000 words i just uh, become a little bit envious but okay fine it is a way you know i have been working for the past 4 uh, 5 uh, years and uh, whatever god gives me the opportunity and the time i just try to make the best use of it and just not cringe for time so even if i like for example if i'm actively working on a project or on a story the like i am right now So even if I get 15 minutes, I'll do it. I maybe I'll just write a sentence. That's enough. But I'll do it. I'll not just wait for time for me, you know, to come for me. So I, you have to find time like here and there, a little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah. So and each one has their own part, I think. So and it's just as long as you're enjoying your part and what you're doing, I think that's fine. <laughs> I think once one, if we start comparing, then there is no end to it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, but you have managed to write three books already, and that's awesome. Uh, so, which which one is your favorite, and why? Okay, so just a little update that I have managed to write actually. Uh, if I count the uh, current one, which is almost finished, so I managed to write six books now. Three of wow. them have been published on different platforms, and uh, okay. one of one of them uh, I recently pitched to uh, the Book Bakers Literary Agency, Swail Mathur, right? And one is still in the queue, so it will also be pitched somewhere. and the six yeah. one i'm writing so if you really ask me you know whenever this question is because i am also have been a like a host of a, a wonderful talk show like yours okay yeah. <laughs> so whenever i ask this question the the most common reply which i get is that you know see i like all of my books and that's true you know i like all of my books i like all of my stories and uh, all of my characters for me the characters are like real people so actually i love yeah. all of them uh, but if you really ask uh, uh, if i don't uh, uh, i mean uh, have a bias then i'll say just like for a parent like of a, a father or a mother might have three or four children so definitely yeah. they all of their children but the first child is always special because uh, the first child gave you the meaning of being a parent right so in a way i'll say my first book the last wish tell will always be a special uh, thing for me mm-hmm. that's it yeah i have actually one of your books uh, so that people yeah. start yeah thank you very much thank you tell me a little bit about this book okay this. So Dead People's Town basically is uh, happens to be India's first zombie fiction horror novel uh, because uh, prior to it uh, in horror genre and specifically in zombie genre uh, a couple of films have been made in India yeah. that they also are very new until like five years ago uh, no film was also made the first film I think uh, commercial which was made was uh, Go Go Gone which came I think in two thousand 
13 yeah. or 12 something like that and after that there was a long pause and then recently netflix we had vetal and then now a lot of zombie films are being made okay talking of uh, books uh, i think no book was uh, written by an indian author that is based in indian town and uh, based upon indian characters and which has all the indian elements and drama into it so that is a thing now as i grew up watching all these films uh, uh, the one of my favorite genre in the horror so one of my favorite sub genre was this zombie genre which is hugely popular uh, in the west in america and europe even in the eastern countries like korea china japan it's a hugely popular so much cult yeah yeah it is it is a whole uh, amazing cult following right zombie genre but in india uh, people first of all did not even understood what is zombie <laughs> so when i mentioned to some of my colleagues that i have written a zombie something like a book they asked me what is what is the meaning of a zombie first of all okay explain to us so mm-hmm. that is about it and uh, it is basically a uh, so it is my tribute to this entire genre it is my dedication to this genre that maybe i, I also wanted to do something for it so basically it's a story of a small town where there is a hospital a cancer service hospital and some experiment uh, goes wrong and uh, all the you know doctors nurses staffs around 4 to 500 they turn into this zombies and the hospital has been digitally locked and there is a group of survivors who are caught in this uh, emergency room and it's a story of them whether do are they able to survive this uh, all these zombies or not so it is a simple story nothing much complicated but yeah i wanted to give you know an indian flavor to what i've already seen so many times in hollywood yeah so it's like robin cook meets one of the zombie <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of thing yes so what is uh, the most difficult thing about writing about characters such as zombies i think uh, writing about zombies and all these things what i write is a is the most easiest thing there is nothing difficult about it that is the easiest thing which i can do i can even write a uh, or think about a horror thing i mean a horror story even in sleep so that is the easiest thing for me to do you know right yeah. for me writing difficult part is like uh, writing uh, uh, something like you can say uh, non fiction so that will be difficult for me okay so writing into another, any other genre might be difficult for this is the easiest thing which i can do and i have so many uh ideas and so many i can just write about 100 stories if if i am uh, uh, if time is provided to me somehow yeah so do you start with the plot or the characters or like what is your approach to writing uh, i think uh, for every book it is different uh, sandhya the writing process is different for every book when i wrote my first book the last wish trial right as i already told that it was loosely inspired from this film called blair witch project and on blair witch project what happens that is film makers they go into a uh forest which is supposedly haunted by a witch and it's a first found footage they never see the witch okay and they are just lost in this uh, forest and uh, in the end they see a glimpse of that which maybe if she is there or not okay so i wanted to you know expand upon that idea i wanted to know who that witch was who that witch could be right so there is an entire background of that witch so she was a normal woman 100 years ago who was you know some uh, bad things happened to her zaminda did some bad things to her and then she was converted into a witch and uh, and then who were these people like they were filmmakers but in my story everything is different so so there is a guy who come back to his village and he finds that you know his village is uh, his uh, village is haunted by a witch and what is this? he just wants to know what is that so it expanded upon that idea as i told dad never die the uh, rural legends of rajasthan was based upon these places in rajasthan which are infamous and zombies basically this uh, dark people's town was made upon this entire zombie genre i wanted to do something so i think every uh, uh, book has a different story so i'll not say the plot or the characters uh, sometimes it's a plot sometimes it's a character and uh, so so yeah so it sounded like that one was more about the characters because you went a whole back story and you dug up the characters yeah that interesting yes but, uh, uh, i know that uh, you know so i uh, mean i guess both represented by the same little agents or senior on social media but how do you use uh, social media as an author yeah so first of all uh, i think uh, in today's time using social media is uh, very important obviously you just cannot survive without it i'm talking about as a author you know as a normal person you can avoid social media there is no need of you know uh, putting your pictures and all those things on facebook and instagram which actually i do a lot by the way <laughs> but yeah as an author i mean see what happens is that uh, see ultimately uh, for us the story might be an emotion for us like for example these things it it is an emotion for me i have grown up watching all these things so i'm writing uh, i'm getting my reward by writing these stories even if i don't publish them it doesn't matter to me because the best thing uh, the best part about this entire thing is when i'm writing the book okay 
बट वेन आई एम कमिंग आउट इन मार्केट विद अ बुक सो इट इज अ प्रोडक्ट अल्टीमेट इट इज अ प्रोडक्ट दैट इज टू बी कंज्यूम बाय अ रीडर राइट एंड एज एन ऑथर इट इज माई रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नॉट ओनली टूवर्ड्स द पब्लिशर एंड नॉट ओनली टूवर्ड्स मी बट टूवर्ड्स द स्टोरी आई हैव रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टूवर्ड्स दिस रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टूवर्ड्स द स्टोरी टूवर्ड्स दोज कैरेक्टर्स यू नो टू मेक दैम एज मच विजिबल एंड मोर एंड मोर पीपल एंड मोर एंड मोर रीडर्स कैन नो अबाउट दैम सो सोशल मीडिया इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू शुड एंड हैव टू यूज इट ओनली थिंग इज दैट हाउ लाइक यू आस्क योर स्पेसिफिक क्वेश्चन वॉज हाउ डू यू यूज सो आई थिंक देर आर लॉट ऑफ वेज यू कैन जस्ट शेयर द रिव्यूज विच आर पुट अप बाय द रीडर्स एंड योर फ्रेंड्स सो यू कैन टेल दैम सी दिस पर्सन टोल्ड समथिंग अबाउट यू नो माई बुक और इफ देर आर सम स्मॉल अचीवमेंट्स अबाउट योर बुक यू नो योर बुक गॉट द टॉप रैंक वैन इट रिलीज्ड or it was featured in uh, a newspaper article or wherever or if like for example if i am uh, chatting with you so i'll be like putting it out on social media say i was invited by sandhya so it's a great honor for me right so i am i am a big author now okay i become a big author now so these small small things you can just tell see the entire uh, thing is that you have to make a new reader uh, you have to grab the attention otherwise why one reader should be reading me another i am stephen king right another i am ruskin bond right so they are two legendary horror writers so why should it the anti agenda is to tell that see i am sadad nirwan i am passionate about horror genre and i have written a story so i'll be very happy if you can just go and try it a little bit that sincerity has to come from the author because if the author himself is not sincere and making efforts then why the hell should anybody be interested in reading your book and the best part is that see social media has actually uh, equalized so initially what used to happen is that the big authors who were published by big publishers uh, they used to get platforms in newspapers like times of india or in like a times literature festival or anywhere right now with social media you also have the same tools as that big author you have the same tools as that big publishing house it is up to you and ultimately a reader will connect to with you as an author he might maybe once he will see the publishing house okay fine it is published by so and so Once or twice, but if he doesn't likes your story, uh, he's not going to come back to you. But as an author, if you are able to connect with the reader, you know through your stories also and through your gestures also, right? If somebody asks you a question, you should be uh, humble enough to reply, right? And if someone shares his review, it may be positive, negative, you should be humble enough to accept it and say, okay, thank you very much. Once the connect is made, so there is no comparison with it. So social media is a wonderful tool to connect with your readers, and I think that's why. Uh, every author is using it and they should use it because otherwise there is no point in publishing a book if you don't know uh, if you don't want to put effort into social media or, or about in marketing yeah so it's basically to i think to connect with the audience build the audience right for promotions for marketing and all of that but do you use uh, uh, any social aspect for your writing itself uh, do you use any aspect of uh, uh, is it a social process also for you and how does it help you know? Are you part of any like uh, industry conferences, associations, things like that? Yeah, yeah. So, so I think uh, uh, whenever someone asks me that, uh, like uh, one day, uh, one of my colleague was asking that uh, how much money you are making from this writing these books. So I said, boss, I am not writing uh, for making money. Number one, because obviously I am into the same profession as you are, and my profession is giving me suitable money that is required for my expenditure and my running my family. So I am not into it for money, of course. and uh, to be practical there is actually no money in writing also as you know okay in india at least okay until unless you are writing for film so there is actually no money uh, paradoxically you sometimes you tend to spend invest more money in bringing out a book rather than earning it that's a that's a truth for it so money is not then what why do why are we writing the question comes right uh, number one is so uh, definitely the joy that you get while writing when you're creating this entire world with characters and these people so there is no comparison with it uh, comparison with anything else so number one is that second thing is that what happened to me is that uh, you know uh, after becoming a writer i came to be associated with the people from so many different branches right from so many different arenas right yeah. like for example you i would have never connected with you if i would have not become a writer right my only uh, field of you know connection with people were the medical fraternity or my old yeah. school friend now i'm connected with uh, yeah let's say police like alok lal sir he is a retired police officer with uh, mr kulpi yadav he is a retired indian navy captain <clears throat> like abhirudh dhar my friend he is a banker or like neel disilva he is a proper horror writer or maybe some film makers like let's say anirban mattacharya i used to see me and my wife used to see this crime patrol and uh, uh, southern india you know we were very crazy about it now the producer is i'm friends with him right 
So connecting with so many people, writing has given me this uh, you know advantage and benefit. Otherwise, it would have never happened. And that's the reason because, because uh, see, uh, like let's like say man is a social animal, and I think uh, this writing has given me an uh, opportunity to become you know more and more of that social animal. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. I think it's building that whole. Fraternity, right? I think, and I think, yeah, Absolutely. definitely. I think that's a major part of it. Yes. Absolutely. So, okay. So now, uh, you know, I'm getting into the rapid fire segment <laughs> of the interview. Uh, this is not a current Johar show, but yeah, why not? Why don't? Why can't we have a rapid fire, right? So this is the rapid fire round. Uh, and I said I don't have a hamper, but okay, let's get into it. Okay. So if you had the power to cure a disease of your choosing, what would it be? It will be the disease of comparing with other people's life. Yes. Okay. So after a hard day at the hospital, does writing energize you or exhaust you? It energizes me, like anything. Yeah. yeah. So uh, on average, how long does it take for you to write a book? Uh, because of my profession and my family commitment, so uh, it it might take somewhere between three to six months. Oh, that's awesome, actually. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I'll have to learn a lot from you. Uh, and you did mention that, uh, you know, one of your books has become is uh, in Audible. So, what, so do you like audiobooks? Absolutely. Even before my book, uh, you know, went into that, it was picked up by Audible. Uh, I used to listen to audiobooks. Uh, I think I've been listening to them uh, for the past four or five years because, uh, I, because, you know, when I'm like going on a jog or walking or maybe driving, so I just put on an audio, uh, audio book and that saves time, you know, I'm able to finish books faster when if it is an audio book as compared to a paperback or a Kindle. So if you could meet your characters and you talked about one of them uh, today, what would you say to them? I'll say hi. How are you? <laughs> okay. Cool, casual. I'll get up in. All right. <laughs> okay. That's wonderful. So, um, I think you did talk about some of your uh, future upcoming project, but so which is the next book that we are likely to see? Are you ready to announce it yet or just a story about it? Uh, anything you want to share? Uh, see, I, I don't know. I mean, which book is going to come out next because uh, you know that, you know, how long this entire process takes because it goes when it goes to the pu uh, publication house and then it uh, is affirmed that, okay, we are going to take the book and uh, it will be released. So I actually don't have any control about it. But yeah, yeah, one of the books which I'm working and I think it will be out soon, maybe the end of this year, which is because and that's because it will be released on I think I think as of the plans as of now are to release it on Kindle because uh, okay. I, because uh, for me, you know, staying for like uh, waiting for one or two years for a book, it's, it's very difficult. It, I'm very impatient. So Kindle actually has provided me a media just to like uh, whatever stories I'm writing, at least some of the uh, some of the stories can go to the publication houses, you know, the traditional publishers. Uh, you know, our literary agency or dear friends will, and I think some of the stories can uh, come out on Kindle. And the reason is because of the long waiting period, and that's why. Right. So that will be there. I think I'm going to announce uh, uh, soon, but it is going to be uh, again uh, one of India's first uh, something uh, subgenre in horror. So that has never been uh, written before. And uh, just a little bit clue I can give is that something is related to my own profession. So like if uh, proper medical is uh, combined with horror, you know. Yeah. So, this, uh, I can just uh, give a little bit more is that, you know, every field, every arena, like uh, every place, every profession, like uh, has some uh, rumors, right? Mm -hmm. So when you go to a medical or if you go to an engineering college, let's say, right? So you have rumors. So this college, something was there by like, uh, So there are a lot of rumors in medical uh, 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 field also, medical college also. So it will be like, it's something like based on them. Yeah, so I'll be announcing because it's still in the first draft process, so it's like uh, too early to talk about it, but it'll be, yeah, uh, out soon this year. Oh, that's great. So that's very exciting. Something for all those fans of uh, this genre to look forward to. So I think that's all the questions I had. So, yeah, thank you very much for coming on this channel. Thank you for your time, Siddharth. We are going to look forward to your uh, next book. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, this is part of uh, October is a speculative fiction month uh, because Halloween is around the corner and uh, Siddharth Bhai's uh, interview as part of that. So thank you very much and stay tuned for the next interview. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandhya, once again for inviting me on your wonderful show. And I thank uh, anyone who is uh, sparing his time and watching the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.